there's a joy that we can experience every day of our life if we choose to enjoy it. In other words, if you take life with a grain of salt or say with a sense of humor, then you can look at some of the circumstances of your life and maybe laugh at them, you know, that it's kind of funny from a bigger picture. Because oftentimes, when we're going through something at the time, it doesn't seem so humorous or so interesting, but that we overreact and don't give time a chance for God to work out all that is happening at that moment that we are experiencing it. I know that trials never are seemingly joyful to go through, but James tells us that if we count it all joy, meaning that if we take the time to count to ten, just kidding, <laughs> you don't want to count to ten, you can count to a thousand, and when you're going through a trial, that probably ain't going to cut it. But the point is, if you count out the time span that God will reveal what he's doing in that trial or tribulation, then you'll be able to find that there is joy contained inside it. Just sometimes you have to crack the outer nut in order to get to the kernel. In my utmost for his highest, the way to know, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, John 7:17. 7, the golden rule for understanding spiritually is not intellect, but obedience. If a man wants scientific knowledge, intellectual curiosity is his guide. But if he wants insight into what Jesus Christ teaches, he can only get it by obedience. If things are dark to me, then I may be sure there is something I will not do. Intellectual darkness comes through ignorance. Spiritual darkness comes because of something I do not intend to obey. No man ever receives a word from God without instantly being put to the test over it. We disobey and then wonder why we don't go on spiritually. If, when you come to the altar, said Jesus, there you remember your brother hath ought against you, don't say another word to me, but first go and put that thing right. The teaching of Jesus hits us where we live. We cannot stand as humbugs before him for one second, or hypocrites. We cannot stand. He educates us down to the scruple, down to the detail. The Spirit of God unearths the spirit of self-vindication. He makes us sensitive to things we never thought of before. When Jesus brings a thing home by his word, don't shirk it. If you do, you will become a religious humbug, a hypocrite. Watch the things you shrug your shoulders over and excuse of yourself. You will know why you do not go on spiritually. First go, at the risk of being thought a fanatical, you must obey what God tells you to do. You know, the reality of the Sermon on the Mount that made it so different and so unique and distinctive from any other teaching that existed prior to then and since then is that Jesus meant what he said. He wasn't exaggerating. He was actually dedicating the rules and regulations of someone who was following him would be doing as part of living with him as God existing in them because Jesus said that I only do those things that I see my father doing and he did them. the Sermon on the Mount wasn't something that couldn't be done it was something that he lived and as he did he likewise gave us an example to follow because he said these sayings of mine they're not mine only but they are those things which I am saying your life will be abundant and will stand the test of time if you do those things. So we find ourselves in a quandary when God brings something into our life is that if we obey instantly, if you immediately either write it down so you remember or react to it in a sense of what he says to you, you'll do and then you do it immediately, then you'll find that God will keep progressing you along a path of continuous growth and you'll continually learn more about him. But if you start to disobey or you start to excuse it as though it were, am I sure about that? Or, I don't know, that sounds a little extreme or that's, that's too heavenly minded. Then what you're doing is you're making a barrier between you and intimacy with God in the sense of not acting upon what he has said. Because if you ask yourself, in all honesty, 
sitting down by yourself with God, what did he mean? You already know. I don't have to be a hellfire and brimstone preacher to say, look, Jesus said it, so what's it mean to you? You already know. You have the conviction of the Holy Spirit inside you. You already have that knowledge that you have known from the beginning what it was that he was saying to you. The question is, are you willing to take that extra step to do something about it? And that's the challenge, because the longer you wait to do something, the harder it is to get to that place of automatically obeying, as Jesus says, to do. So whenever you feel, especially today, like God is telling you something, do it. Just do it. You'll see that the results are for Him to determine what they are, not for you. So if you don't see immediately what you think the results should be, trust in the Lord. He'll work it out. He's always done that in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. And you'll find that all along the way, He's just been telling you a simple word. Obey. To obey is better than sacrifice. Thank <laughs> you.